Okay, so Be'ezra Sashem, we are with the light revealed each week, orienting ourselves towards the light of recovery that rests hidden within the heart of the Torah and the Torah that rests within the heart of recovery, revealing how the Torah itself is the Sam HaChayim, is the medicine necessary, is the light necessary to alleviate our struggle, to illuminate our struggle, not to get rid of the process of the struggle itself, not to get rid of the effort necessary to traverse the struggle, but rather to contextualize the struggle, to enable us to see the light that shines forth from within every aspect of the struggle, the gift of what it means to be a human being who has to live with attention and care in this world. Be'ezra Sashem. <clears throat> and it was at the end of these two years, and Paro had a dream. Now, Miketz, the language of Ketz, Rachi says it immediately in the Zohar, Kadosh spends a lot of time talking about this. Miketz is an ending. As Rashi says, there's no Ketz other than a Sof. It represents an end point, a limit point at which something that previously had started long ago is now ending. Now, it doesn't matter what is ending. It doesn't matter what had taken place over the previous two years, because ultimately there is an orientation that we need to develop of how we deal with endings irrespective of where those endings come from. The narrative of what took place during those two years, whatever it was that Paro was involved with, that Yosef was involved with, that Yaakov was involved with, that the Shvatim were involved with, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu was involved with, those were the things that took place during, during those two years. Over here, what we're focusing far more on is not the content of what has taken place, but rather the cates of it, the end of it the ending of things, the termination process, wherein one transitions from the end of a previous beginning to the beginning of a new process is rife with difficulty. It's rife with paradoxical experiences, primarily because an ending is always paradoxical. A case of something, placing a limit, at the edge of something, or as we're going to see, deciding to live with a limit of what we enable ourselves to do, both kills off the option of continuing what I had done previously. So it is a closure of a previous stage, but an ending is also by closing the previous stage, there is an opening that appears in spite of the fact that it's not yet an opening. I have not yet begun something new yet. I am still in the stage of the ending of a previous level, but inherent within the end of a previous level is already Already the germ cell and the potential and the beginning of the emergence of the opening towards the next level. Because every time a person reaches the end of something, every time a person has completed the experience that they had, whether it's a way of living that they want to get over or an act or a task that they've completed, the end demands that the human being take a deep breath and learn how to lean into the fact that things are finished prior to them being complete in this world. A kates, an ending, is always something that is prior to completion. Nothing is fully completed. The only thing that is fully complete is HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Lekel Gomer Alai. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the one who completes everything. I can put 99.9% .9 effort in, but ultimately that is meaningless without that 0.1% of illumination that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives for the entire thing to come about in the right way. This is the secret of the third Beis HaMikdash, which will be built by us, but ultimately through our actions, but ultimately the the final hammer blow that builds the entirety of the Beis HaMikdash is going to be through HaKadosh Baruch Hu, revealing the fact that after all is said and done, all of our efforts, all of that which takes place in those Shnataim Yom, and that two years of effort, ultimately is now going to be seen in the lens of it's HaKadosh Baruch Hu who is going to complete it. And without HaKadosh Baruch Hu, then there is no completion whatsoever, and things bleed into one another. And so the secret of a Kates, the secret of a Sof, the secret of being able to plant my feet sturdily in the moment and say, Ad Kan Tavo, I have completed completed the task of which I was engaged in. I have stopped living my life in that particular way. I'm not going to pay attention to the thing that I've been paying attention to for so long. I'm going to extricate myself. I'm going to pull myself out of it. That stoppage demands a limit. The limit is where the self makes the decision to stop moving because the self only stops moving or the mind only stops moving ultimately when there's a cessation of energy, God forbid, in a moment of death or in a moment of geula. Beyond that, everything is perpetually churning. It's a world of tumuros and tenuah 
of movement and shifts and the chamber of changing colors and ultimately everything is perpetually always already in motion. The decision to stop or to reach an end is not going to be because reality has shown me that it is absolutely certain that I must end whatever it is that I'm looking to end. There will always be an act of choice that I am making to apply an ending here. I am going to live with rigidity. I'm going to live with a placement of a limitation and say, in spite of the fact that I still feel there's something to find here, in spite of the fact that I still feel I might have a relationship to that space, Nevertheless, a person has the capacity of being mitgaber on themselves, strengthening themselves, and creating a limit point, creating a lip at which I say, I am not going to move further. It's the aspect of saying no to oneself, where I am the one who makes the decision that this ends here. I will not continue to allow myself to fall down the natural proclivity of self, which slowly but surely takes me to the place where I know I don't want to be. And therefore, I am going to be the one who has to place a kates. I am going to be the one who has to place a sof. And a sof is scary, an end is scary. Endings are scary because what it means is that when I make an end to something, or I actually decide to stop something, or I actually decide to experience a kates in my life, to realize that a certain thing has reached its limit and I'm done with it, and I'm the one who's going to have to decide to be done with it, and I'm going to be the one who has to decide where that wall is going to be built up to separate the previous way of living from the new way of living. It's frightening because... When I let go of the thing that I feel I have absolutely needed in order to function to the point that I am at right now, the concern is how will I continue to function if I no longer have the tool of functioning? How will I continue to move if the thing that I've been connected to, the object, the subject, the behavior, the idea, whatever it is, whatever the addiction is rooted in, how will I survive without it? Because I've convinced myself that this is the fundamental necessity. And so to end is difficult, not because I enjoy what's happening so much, but because I'm convinced that what is happening is the only way I'm going to survive. And the terror and the fear at the heart of making a decision to stop something without knowing how I'm actually going to feel afterwards is so terrifying that a person will say that I'll continue to live in that perpetual replay of the same thought processes and the same struggles until I make a decision to say ad kan tavo, a kates, I make a tzimtzum, I apply a limit to the natural extension of myself and I say that this stops here. The fear is that I'm not going to be able to handle it. And this is the secret of Tzadok says of kol haschalos kashos. All beginnings are difficult. Why are beginnings difficult? Rav Tzadok says, in truth, it has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that it's a beginning, but it has everything to do with the fact that every beginning comes about through the end of something previous. And endings are very difficult. Finding a kates, finding a, a limit is difficult. Another reason that limit setting is difficult for us is because aside from the fact that we're terrified that if I apply a limit to this thing in my life, I won't be able to survive afterwards, where in truth, the one thing that a person must do is create that limit and realize that they survive. Because when I realize that I survive and I can handle it, uh, I might be more uncomfortable. I might be this, that, or the other thing, but nevertheless, I will survive and I am surviving. A person comes to realize that that thought process that was convincing them that they were going to fall apart if they changed something or if they stopped something was was clearly untrue. And even though it might still be 98% true in our minds, that's far more movable and fixable than something that is 100% true, a cognitive distortion that tells me it's impossible. I can't break free from that. Now that I have a 2% knowledge of the possibility that I can survive after ending that thing, so I have a little bit more koach. The next problem that arises with endings is the ambiguity of them, because to end something implies that I am being masalik, my control. The control of an individual is applied from the beginning process, even the preparatory stage to something, the contemplation stage before a behavior, the process of the behavior, the continuity of a particular behavior, and the engagement with the behavior is all done through the lens of control. I am present in it. I am aware of it. I am manipulating reality to ensure that this thing or this behavior can continue for me. When I decide to end something, that's where I'm being masalik, my control. That's where I'm no longer trying to be mashamish with reality. I'm not trying to form it in accordance with my liking anymore. I'm actually removing my hands, like an aspect of Shabbos where my hands are no longer engaged. It's like the light of Hanukkah, which is Ef shalish tamesh bahem ela l'roisam bilvad. Our natural proclivity is to be mishtamesh in reality, to inform reality so that it ends up being the way that we want it to be because what we're most terrified is the ultimate end, which is what we conceive of death, which in truth, the ultimate end is really Mashiach and redemption. 
And so we're stuck in an anxiety of endings because we assume the ending is something negative and therefore we, and we also don't want to let go of our control. We thrive on holding on to our control. And the Zohar Kadosh picks up on this, that all endings, kat shem l'choyshech, kat shem l'choyshech or kat shem l'geula. There is an ambiguity at the heart of an ending where it's not clear whether this ending is the ending of darkness and the emergence of light or an ending that is going to block out darkness and light because all endings will either simply provide the opportunity to do something new or it will keep me stuck in the thing that I'm not doing anymore. If I don't learn how to say no properly, if I don't learn how to set a limit for myself properly, so then I'm never going to truly feel that I've stopped the previous behavior. Even if I've stopped engaging with the previous behavior, I'm still completely mentally engaged because I haven't ended it properly. I haven't closed the door on it. I haven't grieved it properly and I haven't mourned it properly. The halachos of how a person grapples with endings in their lives. Because in truth, every ending, like we said before, is in and of itself always, always, always the opening of a new possibility. Every moment is an ending and a beginning. Every moment is ending and every moment is reopening us to the possibility of not only finding that the limitation is not simply negative, but the limiting act of myself and setting a limit towards what I want to do, what I want to feel, what I want to think about, what I want to engage in, how I identify myself, what willingness do I have to follow my cognitive distortions over and over down the rabbit hole simply because that's what comes most naturally. When I learn the power of being mitzamse in my mind, utilizing the gavuros of my mind to create a limit or a sof, I'm going to open up upon the possibility of new beginnings. And that is the task of an ending. And that is also the promise of an ending, that when I apply a kates, when I apply an end to something, when I'm willing to perceive that things might not continue this way forever, it's at that point that I'm able to reimagine the future orientation towards the next moment that I would like to have in my life. Rabbi Nachman has something amazing. Arizal does this as well. Paro means paro in, in the Chumash. And paro represents kavura. But the word paro also means revelation, as we find in, in Brismila, Priya, Amila and Priya. Priya is a tearing away for the sake of revealing that paro is a lashon of giloy and revelation and so if we can read the pasuk as follows that it was the end of those 200 those, those two those two years and it's specifically here that uparo the limitation begins to be revealed paro it's specifically there at the ending of a previous level at the end what happens there is that the limit which is paro which is paro mamish, transitions into a revel of revelation, which is the Lushan of Priya. And what is that Priya? What is that revelation of the limit? It's the capacity to dream because the end of a previous assumption about how I am opens up the possibility of a new way of thinking about myself. And that's the birth of dreams. At the edge of conscious thinking, at the edge of the awareness we have about ourselves, that every part of ourselves rests the possibility of a dream which reorients us to our limitations. And in the dream, the ending is always revealed to be a new beginning. Because in a dream, endings and beginnings stop and go above and below, right and left, time and below time, they're all intermingled together. In the light of the dream, this is how Yosef HaTzadik gets out of Mitzrayim, which is the secret of a new beginning. So it's all about at the edge, at the edge, at the edge of the previous moment's experience where I am delicately and firmly planting my feet in the ground and setting a gavura. The gavura of Paro at that moment must be transformed into the secret of Priya of a revelation that the end reveals something new that when I firmly plant my feet in the ground I pivot myself in such a way that I could reveal a little bit more of myself with more intensity the ha'elem is the giloi the atzira is the is the giloi the stoppage the the limitation the 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 self-control the pleasure of self-overcoming all of these elements which are gvura oriented which are oriented towards the concept of endings will ultimately pivot us into a further strength of desiring the true ending which is the new beginning of the next moment the true ending of things the light of Mashiach is that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Ein Sof. There is no end. There is no absolute end. And all ends in our lives and all limitations in our lives are as we identify with ourselves, but when we identify with our higher power, then we realize that there are no endings and that all things that appear to be an ending are transitional points, transitional movements of playfulness and the Sha'ashun of Elam Habba where I move from one stage of being into the next and I realize that I'm still alive and that there's a Ketz Chai and that there's a life at the heart of death and that there's no death and that there's an or at the light of Choyshech and that there's a Yeshua 
Yeshua at the heart of difficulty and that there's calmness and tranquility at the heart of chaos, this is the secret of being mechubar to the true source of all endings, which is Ein Sof, the limitless, endless light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which is how I begin to see Uparu Cholim, that the limitation begins to dream. It takes me into a place of knowing that I can begin again and I can start again. And this is the light of Hanukkah, the light of Hanukkah on Zeus Hanukkah in particular, the ending of Hanukkah. Ultimately, it appears to be the most intensified expression of Hanukkah, but at the very same point, it's the most minimal and basic expression of Hanukkah, of Zeus. This is what it is. What you see is what it is, the thisness of it, the edge of it, the endings that allow something to manifest itself because only through Tzimtzum can something be revealed, only through stopping can a light emerge. So the thisness of it all, the, the present nature of all things in their self-abiding is the revelation of the Or Mufla Remala of the Yesha Amiti of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Or Ein Sof of the limitlessness of every opportunity in our lives. And it's specifically at the doorposts in our lives, at Ben Hashmashos, by Ragle de Tarmidoi, in the Shuk itself, at the edge of things, the legs are the lower part of the body that appear to be the ending. The Choshech of Yavan appeared to be the ending of something. Choshech appears to be the end of day. But ultimately, all of these endings represent the transition from apparent endings into transitional spaces and a space that is in between, a transitional space, a liminal space that is both inside and outside, that is both beginning and ending, ending and beginning. And it's this light of Zeus Hanukkah, the lowest light, the final light that reveals the beginning light, the light that has always been kindled, even when Hanukkah candles were not kindled. The secret of the Pach Shem and Tahor that would have been available even if there was no Pach Shem and Tahor available in the Kodesh HaKadoshim. Because even when we appear to be at the ending, it's only a Hisairus for a new And at that point, we can be Masig, the Or Ein Sof, where we push ourselves to the secret that endings are not endings, but rather they're opportunities for Uparo Choylem, that the Paro, the Gilui of the limitation for the sake of revelation, the pre the cutting away for the sake of revealing is choylim. It dreams new opportunities into existence. And this is the light of Hanukkah. This is Az Egmor, Bashir Mizmor, Chanukah Samizbeach. Az Egmor. Only then will it be completed. Typically, when we conceive of a then, it's after a completion. But over here, we're saying that the then comes prior to the completion because the then, which is after the now, is still within the framework of prior to an ending, because all endings are just new beginnings. And this is the secret of notes, the end is embedded in the beginning, and the beginning is embedded in the end, and and that the end of thought, the end of thought, the ultimate purpose of all things is to begin again, is to open the mind once again. And this is the secret of the perpetual ability of ourselves to pick ourselves up, or wherever we find ourselves struggling with setting a limit, to realize that the limitation is only for the sake of revelation. The limitation and the and the pushing down into existence through through the resistance that pushes back against my willingness to firmly plant my feet in the ground is simply going to allow me to pivot in new ways of functioning, in new ways of elevating myself specifically from the no saying, specifically from the gavura. And this is the secret of Zois Hanukkah, to let things abide as they are with what they appear to be and to find the illumination and the sublime light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu that radiates and the calmness that radiates off of and within all things things, simply by contemplating the fact that it is as it is right now, and this is the way that I need to find HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu and my higher power have never has never been revealed as much in reality as he is in this moment right now. Each and every person has to be able to say that to themselves. Bazos, this, in this moment, what appears to be an ending, every moment is an ending that is transformed into a beginning, and to reveal that all there is is a beginning. And when a person can walk around with an intentionality of Zos, this is is, this is the secret of Bezos Yavo Aaron El HaKodesh, that with this Aaron enters into Kedusha, that the gateway into refinement of self and living a life of intentionality and attention is ultimately rooted in this awareness that Zos, what appears to be the lowest level, the end of something, is in truth the opportunity and the invitation to lean into it and to be present to it and to contemplate God in it and to find HaKadosh Baruch Hu through it and to find that Nikud of serenity through the path of acceptance. And Be'ezer Sashem, we should be Zoycha to the Ba'ihi Kates at the end, at the end of those two years, the paro cholem, the paro cholem, paro is dreaming, paro, the lashon of concealment is really now moving towards the sake of the revelation. Paro Choylem and the Priya, the Hizgalis, begins to dream and it offers new opportunities. Vihine Oymed Al Hayaor. Vihine Oymed Al Hayaor. Amida is a representation of, of being powerful over something. I stand upon something. And what am I standing upon here? Al-Hayaor. Yaor, 
Yaor was the limits, it was the boundaries. The Svasa Yaor were the boundaries that enabled the Nile River to kind of form itself. Al Svasa Yaor, it's specifically at those limitation points where we have now the ability by reorienting ourselves to what endings are, Vayim Ikech Nathayim Yom, when we can understand the secret of the value of endings and how they really are there to be revealed that the truest form of ending is the Ein Sof, that there is no limit whatsoever, and that by limiting myself, I'm in truth giving more ability for myself to grow, so then I can understand the secret of the paro cholim, that limitation of myself, that concealment of myself, which is at the very same moment a revelation, a furthering of myself, a growth that comes about by way of the constriction itself for the intensification of the power by holding it back, that can lead me to vayi oimed al or that I am now standing upon the svas or I am standing upon what appears to be the limitations in my life, and I have control over the fact that, yes, it appears to be an ending, yes, it appears to be a limit, but it's simply an emergence from a limit to come to a greater grasp of myself, which is becoming even better and more than I am in this present moment. And this is the secret of Hashem Sefasai Tiftach that we say prior to opening our mouths in prayer. What we say is, Hashem, open up my lips and allow my mouth to declare your praise. But lips, Svas, also means a limit point. It means an edge, the edge that the previous moment ends at prior to the new moment beginning. And it's Hashem Sefasai Tiftach, open up these endings for me. Help me understand the secret of Ein Sof, Ein Sof, the fact that when I look inside of things, I find saturation of light, the secret of Sufganiyot and the secret of the Ner Hanukkah and all of the saturation with oil to come to find that those things which I thought were endings and, and absent of beginning are in truth just opportunities for an Or Ein Sof to be sure, which is the secret of the Haschala to me this and the Hischachas to me this and the renewal of ourselves at every given moment and our capacities to start again from wherever we're at in this moment, God willing, Be'ezrus Hashem.